Now let's look at some solutions for some of the orthogonal uh, problems that we defined. We start with one dimensional orthogonal range searching. In this problem, we have a set of endpoints in one dimensional space, so on, on a line. In other words, the input points are just a set of numbers. We like to store them in the data structures, and the queries that we're going to be answering are axis aligned rectangles. But in one dimension, an axis aligned rectangle is nothing but an interval, as shown here. So we have two variants of the problem. Remember that we might want to count the number of points inside this interval or report the number of points inside this interval. The solution to this problem is actually very easy and you should be able to uh, figure it out with what you know. So if you build a bind balanced binary search tree on top of these points or these numbers and to link these points in a linked list on top of that, then we can do uh, both of these queries very efficiently. Both of these data structures use linear space. To count the number of points, we just need to find these endpoints. And we want to count how many points are to the left of this point, and we want to count how many points to are to the left of this point, and then subtract them. In a balanced binary search tree, we can easily store the number of points that are to the left of every input element. So that's not, uh, that's not a problem. To be able to report them, we find uh, this endpoint and then using the linked list, we can just traverse the points between these two uh, endpoints in uh, log n plus k time, where log n is the time it takes to locate this endpoint of the interval, and k is the size of the output. And we'll be paying uh, constant time per output element. There's another way to look at the solution, and that is uh, through the notion of canonical sets. So, Consider a balanced binary search tree. So I'll assume these green um, nodes are the internal nodes of a balanced binary search tree, and the points themselves are stored at the leaves. A canonical set is a subset that is contained in an interval, uh, in a subtree of this binary search tree. For example, this is a canonical set, or in the, all the points in, uh, stored in this subtree are canonical sets. In other words, um, we start by having the whole point set as one canonical set, then we split it in two halves. The points containing the left subtree are canonical set, and the points con containing the right subtree are also canonical set, and then we recursively continue doing the same thing. So the uh, important observation here is that the query interval can be covered by log n canonical sets. In this example, we are covering the query interval with only two canonical sets, this green node here and this green node here. Remember that the input points themselves are also canonical sets of size 1. So how do we prove the claim that the interval is covered by log and canonical sets? Um, we do the following. Consider the interval. Let V be the highest node that is splits interval. In other words, uh, if you're doing a binary search tree on the right uh, endpoint of the interval, you're branching to the right of V, and if you're searching for the left endpoint, you're branching to the left of V. Um, and assume the V is the highest node that has this property. In fact, uh, we will be the unique um, node in the binary search that has this property. Okay, now the claim is that we can cover the left side of this interval with log n canonical sets and the left right side with also log n canonical sets. So let's just focus on the left half of this interval. We follow uh, the the path that connects V to the leaf to the or to the successor of this endpoint. This path uh, will be a list of interior nodes until we get to a leaf. So these internal nodes have two cases. Imagine we go from V to the child of V, that is W. We have two cases. Either this W is outside this uh, interval. In other words, uh, this endpoint is a smaller than the key stored at W. In this case, we don't do anything. We simply move to the right child of W. The other case is W is a smaller the key store the W is smaller than this uh, left boundary. In this case, we add uh, the canonical set represented by the left child of W to the to our cover, 
So everything here obviously is inside the interval. And we add uh, all the points inside the subtree to our as the as canonical set to our cover. And then we move to the right child of w. By continuously doing this, we'll be covering the interval. And furthermore, we'll be covering z that most log n canonical sets. This is because the the path that connects this node this to the to v has at most log n or o of log n uh, vertices. And if every one of them is in this case, then we will paying at most one canonical set for every uh, node on the path. So that uh, sums up to log n canonical sets. There is another way to to look at the solution. That is consider the path that connects v to a node that is a predecessor of this uh, this point. Sometimes this path will make a right turn and sometimes will make a left turn. Every time you make a left turn, you add the right child to the cover, something like this. So we again have log and canonical sets that covered interval. Another important property that we like to prove for the canonical sets is that the total size of the canonical sets is n log n. How do we prove this? Um, sorry. How do we prove this? Uh, we just observe that uh, the canonical sets at every level has linear size. Or in other words, every point or every leaf is stored in at most log n canonical sets. So therefore, the total size of the canonical sets is n log n. Okay. Now that we understand one-dimensional ring searching pretty well, we can move on to two-dimensional ring searching. And this can be done using range trees. So in this uh, case of the problem, we have a two-dimensional point set. We have a set of endpoints in 2D, and we have a proper axis line rectangle R. A range tree can be simply described in the following way. First, we build a binary search tree, a balanced binary search tree, on the point sets ordered by the x-coordinates. Then, uh, as we saw, this balanced binary search tree defines some canonical sets. Then for every canonical set inside this tree, we store the, the set of points in another balanced binary search tree, this time ordered by the y-coordinates. This data structure that we store ordered by the y coordinate is we call it the secondary data structure. And the canonical sets of that binary search tree are also called secondary canonical sets. Let's look at a picture. So this is a uh, balanced binary search tree stored on the x coordinates. In other words, um, all the points stored in this and the right sub child uh, subtree have higher x coordinates than all the points stored on the left subtree. And this property holds recursively. To build the secondary data, uh, secondary data structure, we take one canonical set, let's say this node, and all the points are stored in the subtree of this node, and then store these points in a second binary search tree, but this time the ordering is given by the y coordinates. So the points stored in this red subtree are the same set of points stored in the green subtree. The only difference here that is that the green points are ordered with respect to x-coordinates, whereas the red points or red subtree is ordered by the y-coordinates, but they are the same points. So this is a relatively simple data structure to build. How do we answer queries? Let's look at one query uh, rectangle. So assume we have a query rectangle that is given by interval x1, x2, Cartesian product by interval y1, y2. We know that given the balanced binary search tree T, we can cover the interval x1, x2 using log n canonical sets. Pick one canonical set, let's say SI. We know that we have stored SI in a, a balanced binary search tree T of SI ordered by the y coordinates. So this means I can cover the interval y1 up to y2 with log n secondary canonical sets, something like this. So let's look at one such canonical set. Um, so one such canonical set is stored here. So how do we answer queries? We look at all the canonical sets or all the secondary canonical sets, and we either um, sum up their sizes or we just list the points stored in their union. 
The important observation here is that the query time is log squared n. In other words, the number of canonical sets is log squared n. This is because we have log n canonical sets to begin with, and every canonical set uh, leads to log n additional secondary canonical sets. So the total number of secondary canonical sets is going to be log n times log n, which is log n squared. Let's look at the space analysis of the state structure. So this part one takes linear space because it's just a balanced binary surgery. The second, um, to, to calculate the space used by the second line of the algorithm, we just need to do the summation. So for every uh, canonical set S, we're using, uh, we're building a balanced binary surgery, which is T of S. And we know that a binary search tree stores consumes linear space in terms of the number of its points so the number of points here is the same, exactly this so this uh, balanced binary search will take all of size of s space but what is this summation this summation is the total size of the canonical sets from step one we proved previously that the total size of canonical sets coming from a balanced binary search tree is n log n so therefore this data structure uses n log n space so to summarize uh, this range tree in this construction uses n log n space and the query time is log squared n. If you want to list the points, you will have a plus k here where the k is the size of the output.